How to create a text spark reveal effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Inside your project's edit window, go to effects. Underneath the toolbox, select effects. And go to drag a fusion composition clip to your edit timeline. Select this new clip. Hold in control or command if you're a Mac user and press D to alter the clip duration if you wish. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion Nodes panel, go to select the Text Plus tool from underneath the Fusion timeline. With this new tool selected, select either the left or right view options underneath this to see a preview of your text above your Fusion timeline. Go to Inspector and underneath the text, type in the message that you wish to have appear in your animation effect. Adjust the font style and size as you wish, keeping the text as white. With text 1 still selected, hold in Shift and press Space. In the search box at the bottom of the new Select Tool window which appears, go to find a Merge Tool. Select this and go to click on Add. This new tool should be automatically connected to text 1 via the yellow background arrow so that the text appears behind the sparks that we will add later on in this tutorial. Deselect Merge 1 by clicking anywhere on the Empty Nodes grid and go to Select an Ellipse tool from the Nodes options. With this new tool selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls to add a gentle feather to the edge of your ellipse shape Increment soft edge slightly to 0.0125. For the dimensions of the flying sparks, we will reduce width to 0.2 and height to 0.02. Deselect your ellipse node, hold in shift and press space again, and go to add a P emitter tool. With this new tool selected, hold in shift and press space again, and go to add a P directional force tool which we will use later on to control the flow of the spark particles. As an optional node to generate random particle movement in your animation, with P Directional Force still selected, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add P Turbulence. With P Turbulence selected, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add P Render, which will enable DaVinci Resolve to process your particle animation effect. With this P Render tool selected, under Inspector, ensure that Output Mode is set to 2D. To ensure that the particles appear in front of the text, click and drag from the grey box alongside P Render 1 to the green foreground triangle which appears alongside Merge 1. Then connect Merge 1 to Media Out 1. In order to be able to use the ellipse shapes that we have created as the particles, first select P Emitter 1, and under Style, Change style from point to bitmap. A yellow triangle should appear alongside P emitter 1, enabling you to connect ellipse 1 to this. Select either left or right view underneath media out 1. With P emitter 1 still selected, find the green circle representing the particle source on your preview window. Click and drag via the red central box to a point on your canvas where the particles are easier to see. My intention is to create three spark effects, the first being in the bottom left corner of the C, the second in the bottom right corner of the I, and the third on the dot of the I. I will first create the spark for the C. Click and drag via the red central box inside your green circle for the particle source, and ensure that this is placed on top of one of your characters. The position of this particle source can also be adjusted in the region section under translation, by adjusting the X and Y offset values. Select either left or right view underneath P Render 1. Under Inspector, select Controls. Under Emitter, set Lifespan to 15, so that the sparks don't remain on screen for too long. Double click on Velocity. Increment Velocity to 0.1, so that your spark particles move. As we click and drag the red frame pointer on our Fusion Timeline to the right, we can see the direction that the particles are heading in. I wish to adjust the angle so that these float towards the top right corner instead. Under Velocity, adjust Angle depending on where you wish the particles to flow to. 
to have the particles vary slightly in the angle in which they emit from, adjust the angle variance value. The higher the value for angle variance, the more spread out the particles will be around your circular particle source. Since I initially wanted the particles pointing towards the top right corner, to prevent too much deviance from this angle, I will choose a lower value here of 75 for the angle variance variable. To have the end of the particle shapes point in the direction which they are flowing in, open up rotation and change rotation mode from absolute rotation to rotation relative to motion. As we can see on the preview, some of the particles are now dropping down. In order to ensure that these float in the direction that you want them to, select P directional force, keep strength set to 0.1 and adjust direction as you wish. Here in this example, I will set direction to zero so that the particles flow upwards, but to also add curvature to their trajectory as if they were being pulled down by gravity and not just heading in a straight direction. To have the particles fade in and out, return to P-emitter one, select style, double click on fade controls, increase fade in to 0.1 so that the particles are fading in in the first 10% of their lifespan and decrease out to 0.9 so that these spark particles fade out in the final 10% of their lifespan. Double click on size controls, again to vary the appearance of your spark particles, increment size variance to 0.02 and to emphasize the fade out effect, drag the node on the right side of the size over life graph by about a quarter of the way down so that the spark particles reduce in size over their lifespan. Double click on color controls. Double click on color over life controls. With this first color node selected at position 0.0, .0 on your color over life bar, double click on the box underneath this to add a light beige appearance to your sparks using the hexadecimal code hash FFFCD7. Click OK. And to ensure that your spark particles maintain this color shade for most of its lifespan, we will increment the value underneath the color over life bar slightly to 0.2. Drag your mouse cursor underneath the color over life bar on the far right side until an addition symbol appears next to your cursor. Click once to add a second color node, which should be placed at 1.0. Double click on the color box underneath once again, and go to add a light orange fire spark color using the code hash C95 for 2D. To add a gentle glow to your spark particles, select P render one, hold and shift and press space, and go to add a glow node. By default, the fusion composition clip in DaVinci Resolve plays at a frames per second rate of 24. I wish for the spark to appear after one second of screen time, where the glow itself will be at its most intense. In order to do this, Click and drag the red frame pointer to the beginning of your fusion timeline. Under Inspector and Controls, select the keyframe diamond icon for glow size, which will determine how spread out the glow effect will be. The higher this value, the more spread out and transparent the glow effect will be. Click in the keyframe diamond icon for glow also. Set the glow value to 0.9, so that high vibrancy is already applied at the very beginning. Now drag the red frame pointer to a second in to your video clip. Here in this case, I will drag this to frame 24. I will now increment glow to 0.982. I will now advance a quarter of a second on my fusion timeline to frame 30 and will set the glow value back to its original setting of 0.9. I will also increment glow size here to 15 to spread the vibrancy across the canvas slightly. Return to your P-emitter node. Since I only want the sparks to appear after a second of screen time, we must ensure that none are emitted at the very beginning. Return to your first frame. Under Inspect and Controls, select the keyframe diamond icon for number under emitter and reduce this value to zero. Advance to the first second point on your fusion timeline. Here in this case, I will go to frame 24. Select the keyframe diamond icon once again for number. Advance forward by one frame, here in this case to frame 25. And increment number to its original value of 10. 
now advance almost a quarter of a second on your timeline. Here in this case, it will be to frame 30, exactly where we were, where we reduce the glow effect of our fusion particles. Select the keyframe diamond icon once again for number. And to have the spark particles stop emitting after this point, advance forward by one more frame, here in this case to frame 31, and reduce number value to zero. Now to add an animated glow effect to the text. Again, like with the sparks, the text should not appear at the start of the video. Select the text plus node. Return to the first frame. Under inspector, select shading. And underneath properties, click on the keyframe diamond icon next to opacity. Change the value for opacity to zero. Now advance forward on your fusion timeline until you find the frame where the sparks first start appearing on your canvas. Click on the keyframe diamond icon next to opacity once you have found this frame. Now advance forward by half a second of screen time, here in this example by 12 frames to frame 38, and increment the value for opacity back to its original value of 1, so that the text is finally revealed. With text 1 still selected, hold and shift and press space, and go to add a soft glow tool. Return to the first frame on your fusion timeline. Go to inspector and underneath controls, click on the keyframe diamond icon next to gain. Increment this value for gain to three. Select your text node and use the frame pointer to find the section on your video clip where the opacity value is roughly 0.75. Once you have found this, stay on this frame Reselect the soft glow node and select the keyframe diamond icon for gain. Advance forward by a quarter of a second on your fusion timeline. Here in this example, I will go to frame 41. And to have the glow effect fade away, once the text is revealed, I will reduce the value for gain to zero. To add additional sparks to your effect, first highlight the ellipse P emitter directional force and P turbulence nodes holding control and press G to group. Select this new group and press F2 to rename the node to make it easy for you to recognize which spark on your animation this is referring to. I will rename this group as C. With this group selected, hold and shift and press space and go to add a P merge tool, which will enable us to combine multiple sparks together. Select this new group holding control and press C to copy. Deselect, holding control and press V to paste. Since this group will make up the spark that will appear at the bottom of my I character, I will rename this group as I1. Connect this group to the green arrow alongside P merge one. To open up the nodes inside a group, double click, select P emitter, under inspector and region, Adjust the X and Y offset settings to change the location where the sparks will appear on your animation. Select controls and adjust angle and angle variance under velocity, depending on how you want the spark effects to flow. I will select P directional force inside this new group and will adjust the direction value as appropriate. Click on the close button of your group once you've made the necessary adjustments and repeat this P-merge process until you have all the spark animation effects that you wish. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.